same applies to the spouse. You know you love them, but you need to say it again and again. Like we got to the food moments ago, and you need to say this food is, mashallah, it's really, really great. Even if the salt is a little bit more. Because sometimes, as I was saying, she spends so much time bringing it in front of us, and we are worried about how it's smelling, number one. And number two is we say, as we taste it, the salt is too much, no? <laughs> salt is too much, no? What are you talking about? She just looks at you and her face flops. I've been at it for three hours here, four hours. I've been busy with this for so many months. And what is she going to say? Next time I'll try a bit better, a bit harder. That's if she's a good woman. If not, she'll say, never going to cook this again. <laughs> typical. Never gonna, it's typical. Never going to cook this again. And if you have someone who's very witty, the next time there's salt to be put in, I'll call you to put it. <laughs> so we need to praise the cooking of our wives. We need to praise their, 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 their dress code, especially. For example, I can let you know something that has worked for some people. Where you find some women, you know, they don't like to dress appropriately. So the husband sometimes wants to tell them something. There are two, three ways of doing it. You can either say, this is very bad. I don't want you to wear this. And you know, you might have a response. But if you want a response from the heart, what you do is, you tell them, the other dress looked much better than this. You see, so you are praising one thing and that praise is not there when the other thing is there. So you have told them in a way that this is what I really love. And go beyond the limits in praise. That's your wife. Don't worry. You can say whatever you want to. Mashallah, in terms of goodness. Like the food, you, when you eat, even if it is a little bit this way, that way, just praise it, mashallah, see what it is. Praise the effort at least, mashallah, you know. Let me tell you what has happened once. The imam in the masjid said, you need to praise the cooking of your wife, just like I said now. So the man went home and he had this meal and he was looking at it and looking at his wife and smiling and all happy, mashallah, and excited and everything. And when he finished, he says, oh, it was awesome and the wife says what i've been cooking for you for 21 years you never said that <laughs> today when the food came from the neighbor <laughs> you want to say it was awesome <laughs> so he says oh i'm sorry about that i didn't know <laughs> Go home and praise the right people. Say good words to them. It will solve most of your problems. Utter the good words and protect your tongue from saying sweet words to those whom those words are going to pierce their hearts and they are not going to be able to do anything halal about it. Remember what I've said. What's the point of going to someone whom you know already that you've already got your quota of four wives, mashallah. You say you're sitting and you're happy. And you go to someone else and you tell them, oh, I love you. You're so beautiful. You're so nice. And oh, I, wow, nobody's told me that before. <laughs> wow, so lovely and so on. Is there any form of halal outcome of those statements? They said, today we went and we were told to come out and utter good words. So my darling, here's the best of words. Oh, you're gorgeous and so on. Believe me. Who are you talking to? If you are uttering those beautiful words to a person whom they will be processed through in a way that they will want to do something about it which will never be halal. In that case, we are sinning. Remember that. Like the man, they say the one man, and this is also a story that I've heard very recently. His wife tells him, listen, you know what? You have to tell me. You have to swear that you're going to be honest with me. He says, okay, I'm honest. Describe your love for me. So the man says, he thinks for a moment and he says, you know what? You are like my SIM card. I'm like the phone, you know? <laughs> Without you, I'm nothing. Now you know that. <laughs> wow. So the woman goes back so happy and delighted. Wow, I'm so happy. It's the sweetest, most romantic thing I've ever heard. Imagine, without a SIM card, what is a phone? How many of us have phones? No SIM card. Can you have a phone? No SIM card? You have a SIM card. So then he walks out. And as he's walking out, he says, and she's saying, Wow, most romantic word I've ever heard. He says, she doesn't know my phone has a quad SIM. <laughs> Allah protect us. What a dirty mind. What a dirty mind. But this is the problem with us today. We want to utter words that just soothe people's minds when we don't really mean them sometimes. 
Why would he have spoken about a dual sum or a quad sum if he was sincere? He wouldn't even have uttered that. May Allah protect us. So the reason I raise this is, I know some of the brothers are nudging each other to say there is a quad sum in the market, you know that? <laughs> but that does not make the relationship any better. We need to know that when you say beautiful words, you need to make sure that you are uttering them to the right person. And you need to make sure you are not being hypocritical by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For your spouse, it's an act of worship to utter words, to make them smile, to make them feel desired, to make them feel they are the most important people in the world. There will come a time when you too will feel that definitely they are the most important people in this world.